Welcome to Home Field Advantage, SFA's only home for sports nationally, locally, and on campus. I'm your host, Bobby Morrow. On this week's edition, we'll be covering the Rugby World Cup, SFA football, the Cowboys' personal issues, we'll have SFA's own Demi Payne in the studio, and we'll look further into ESPN here on campus. All that and then some, coming your way on Home Field Advantage. Houston Texans find a winning recipe to beat their rival Titans. Houston bounced back from an embarrassing 44-26 loss against the Dolphins last week with a 20-6 victory against the Titans. Despite missing Arian Foster, who suffers from an injury with a torn Achilles, the Texans' DeAndre Hopkins and J.J. Watt both came out with a boom to put the Texans on top. J.J. Watt tied a career high with nine quarterback hits and added two and a half sacks, including one where he caused a fumble that the Texans recovered early in the fourth quarter. And DeAndre Hopkins put Houston on top in the second quarter with an amazing 21-yard touchdown catch. The win leaves the team in second in the AFC South. The Heat rallies from a 21-point second-half deficit as Rockets fail to win another game. Last night's loss against the Miami Heat keeps the Rockets on a losing streak of 0-3. The Rockets are hurting and haven't resembled anything close to a contender. Miami was down 65 to 44 early in the second half. However, the Heat outscored Houston 65 to 24 the rest of the way. Marcus Thornton scored 21 points for Houston, and James Harden had only 16 on two for 15 shooting. The Rockets have dropped each of their first three games by exactly 20 points, each which drops them to number 29 in the league and tied for last in their conference and division. This weekend saw the final of the 2015 Rugby World Cup, hosted by England. After the end of a long and hard six weeks, New Zealand and Australia were the two remaining teams who battled it out in the final in London for the right to become world champions. Defending champions and tournament favorites, New Zealand dominated possession but failed to take advantage in the opening stages. Yet two tries either side of halftime gave them a 21-3 lead. Australia fought back to get to 21-17, but their tired legs couldn't handle the All Blacks as New Zealand scored late points to win 34-17 and become the first ever country to win the Rugby World Cup on three separate occasions. New Zealand will defend their crown in Japan in 2019. For the second week in a row, the Michigan Wolverines faced yet another do or die situation against the Minnesota Golden Gophers, but the outcome was favoring the Wolverines this week. The Gophers had the ball on the Michigan one yard line with 19 seconds left in the fourth quarter when the audible was called for Minnesota quarterback Mitch Liner to check from the run to a pass. That play took 17 seconds off the clock and the pass was incomplete, giving the Trilling Gophers only two seconds to beat the six into a Wolverine. Minnesota attempted a QB sneak, that, but Michigan's defense stuffed liner at the line of scrimmage, giving Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines another Big Ten victory, 29 to 26. What better way to end the MLB season with, than with some extra inning drama that would give the Kansas City Royals their first World Series title since 1985? The Royals were down 2 to nothing on the top of the ninth, but a leadoff walk to Lorenzo Cain and an RBI double by Eric Hosmer, followed by Hosmer making a daring play to score, tied up the game and sent it into extras. The extra innings were a battle until in the 12th inning when the Royals drove in five runs to seal their victory and officially claim their title as world champions. College football never seems to disappoint, and this weekend was no different. The Miami Hurricanes were in Durham, North Carolina on Saturday to take on the Duke Blue Devils for their eighth game of the year. It was a competitive game throughout, and when the fourth quarter began, it seemed as though both teams refused to lose, which led to a combined 31-point quarter from both teams. With, it, with six seconds left, the Blue Devils sent a squib kick to the Canes, which was fielded at the 25-yard line. Eight ladders and 49 seconds later, Corn Elder scored from Miami on what turned out to be a play that will go down in history. The final score, Miami 30, Duke 27. SFA's football team played an impressive game this past Saturday as they beat Incarnate Word 55-21 at homecoming. The Lumberjacks had 443 yards of total offense, passing for 265 and rushing for 178. SFA converted 50% of its third down opportunities. Defense held Incarnate Word to just 281 yards of total offense. This will be SFA's third straight win as the Lumberjacks improved to 3-5 on the year and 3-3 in the Southland Conference play. The next game will be November 7th at 2.30 p.m. at Central Arkansas. 
The Houston Cougars improved to 8-0 after a shutout victory against the Vanderbilt Commodores. The Cougars outscored the Commodores in a final score of 34-0. The Cougars converted 21 points off of turnovers, the last being a 50-yard interception return for a touchdown by cornerback William Jackson III. Houston is currently ranked number 18 in the nation in the top 25. The next game will be Saturday, November 17th at 2.30 p.m. against the Cincinnati Bearcats. When we return, we'll go to the studio with ESPN3 here at SFA. Stick around, this is Home Field Advantage. ESPN recently built studios here on campus to ensure that all of our home games air on ESPN3 or the Watch ESPN app. Plenty of the students from Home Field Advantage work for them, so we decided to take you all into the studios inside of William R. Johnson Coliseum. Yep. One of the major components that accentuate the SFA's lumberjack pride is sports. Fans can keep up with scores and standings through social media, newspapers, magazines, and local television. SFA is now the first institution in Southland Conference to produce ESPN3 telecasts for all home football, basketball, soccer, and volleyball games on a national level. ESPN3 is ESPN's live digital 24-hour multi-platform sports network, which delivers more than 4,300 global sports events annually. All thanks to Corbin Pate. And I began to pick up phones and, and dial and email and beat doors down until I could figure out how we could get a partnership. After the approval of the collaboration, a meeting with Department Chair of Mass Communications, Dr. John Hendricks, took place to plan on how students can be involved with production. Three feet, maybe. The number one thing out of all of this is student experience. And then he'll plug in the cameras, and so they'll pop up right here. And then you go and click the Volleyball Lamar and then open on Control Panel. And when you click that, this pops up. Dr. Hendricks explained that the collaboration between ESPN, the Athletics Department, and the Mass Communication Department will provide students with real-world, practical experience at sports broadcasting. Students who take part of the production will have helped produce programming that will be aired on national television. It's more than that. You two stay here since for the most of the season you guys have been over there, so you guys can stay here. You need to sit by Audra and you need to learn uh, the replay. The technical director might be stationed at the Johnson Coliseum, but the home games can be broadcasted elsewhere. Now coach, tonight's action, Southland Conference Volleyball, Mark Cardinals against host Stephen F. Austin Lady Jazz. Okay, great job, Greg. I'm going to cut that up and I'll be back in touch with you. Okay, sure do. Stephen F. Austin is also one of only 50 schools uh, in Division I athletics to have this partnership in the entire country. And by the time MassCom students graduate, they will already have experience in working directly for ESPN. For Home Field Advantage, I'm Philly Galindo. Welcome back. My good friend and fellow athlete, NCAA record holder, Demi Payne, joins us today in the studio. So thank you for coming in the studio with us today. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I have a couple of questions for you. Um, so what brought you to SFA, the small Nacogdoches town? <laughs> <laughs> well, after I had my little girl Charlie, I just really wanted to be closer to home and mm -hmm. be near my family. And actually, the coach at SFA, he's like a longtime family friend, so uh -huh. it was like perfect. Cool, cool, cool. So Char yeah. you, mean, you mentioned Charlie as your daughter. I know all about her. But, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so um, tell me how you juggled that. And also, I heard that you are on the president's list for getting a 4.0. Uh, tell me how you... Juggle that as well as, you know, a daughter and a fiancé and, you know, just how do you do it? Just tell me how you can do it. Oh my God. Um, yeah, it's, it gets really difficult at times, but I think I just go with the flow and whatever happens, happens. And if there's a problem, I attack it and um, I just don't freak out. You know, if I freak out, that's when everything starts falling apart. So. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so we're definitely on the same track team. And we both have the same coach, but I love Coach McCown. She loves Coach McCown. Everybody loves Coach McCown. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> so you obviously pole vault. So what is, what's your PR and what, what meet was it at? I, um, my PR is 15, 7 and a half, and mm -hmm. I jumped that at New Mexico. It was indoor, Indoors, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, what, would, what would be your favorite track meet that you've ever been to? Probably New Mexico, because <laughs> um, I jumped the highest there, but... Uh, 
being in Eugene and winning a national championship was just like amazing. Out like of this world, it was yeah. the coolest moment of my life. Definitely. Besides Definitely. having Charlie. Oh but, well, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, not having her because that was awful. But <laughs> afterwards, you know what? Yeah, and yeah. we know what you mean. What, you mean. Um, what about China? We we went to Beijing. What? How yeah. was? How was that experience? Uh, I know you didn't do as well as you wanted to, but um, like overall, you were in freaking China. Like, how, yeah. How um, I mean, it was a really good experience, like you said, and I didn't do as well as I wanted to, but I mean, I was surrounded by such amazing athletes, mm -hmm. and I think seeing those athletes on that level really made me realize that I need to be working a little harder, and mm -hmm. next time around, I'm going to be ready, and I'm going to make sure that I do well. <laughs> so, okay, so next time around, so does that mean Olympics? Is that what you're, oh, yeah. is that Olympics. you're shooting for, the Olympics? Yeah. Heck yeah, dude. That's <laughs> awesome. Anyway, so is there anything you do like before track meets that, I guess, is just like your thing you have to do before a meet? It's like your su like superstition or like a ritual you do? Um, I take a lot of ice baths, and it's usually just before a meet, but it makes me feel like it rejuvenates my legs. So like the day before? The day before, yeah. Um, that's basically so that's it. That's about like, it. Yeah, I mean, I listen to music, but nothing like Nothing in particular, like one song you listen no. to? You don't take a lot of nothing? You don't, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> So, I know you drink, okay, we drink Red Bull before. Yeah, no, I do drink Red Bull. You have to have I Red have Bull. a Red Wait, Bull. Wait, what flavor, what flavor? Um, well, they have the new ones now. I really like the red one. The red one, the cranberry. cranberry. Yeah. Dude, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the cranberry ones, perfect, because like, it's what we Yeah, I know, it's awesome. Want, whatever, okay, so, um, uh, I guess, what else? I don't, <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> I, I freaking, um, okay, well, okay, walking around campus, like, do you get stares? Do you get, <laughs> do you get people like, oh my God, you're Demi Pan, can I talk to you? Can I have a picture with you? I mean, I do, and it's really weird because I'm like, I guess I wasn't expecting that when I came back, mm -hmm. and then, I mean, I get people who ask, like, take pictures with me, and I'm like, yeah, but um, it's, it's crazy, it really is, but it's awesome at the same time. Oh, definitely, and, definitely. I mean, I want to soak it up while I've got it, because mm -hmm. I know, you know, it's not always going to be there. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know, like, uh, I guess, what's your, like, has anyone, like, really stood out to you? I guess, like, ask, like, asking for a picture, has one person really stuck out to you, like, that is really, like, I guess, you've motivated them a lot, how? Like, um, I don't know, there's been a few, I think it's the little kids that really get me, because they're really looking to me as, like, a role model, and it's crazy because at the beginning of this, I wasn't trying to be a role model. I just wanted to come out, make a comeback, and show those people who didn't believe in me that, mm -hmm. hey, I'm back. Like, I'm ready to do this, you know? But along the way, like, I've inspired so many people, and it's just, like, it's so crazy to have, like, little kids come up to me, and they actually, they really do look up to me. So yeah. it's, it's really cool. That'd be cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I guess, like, the little kids that would be, Crazy. And then Charlie, what, what do you think, um, you know, do you want her to grow up to be a pole vaulter as well or do you not really, um, you don't really I mean, care? yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed, like, I want her to be a pole vaulter, but mm -hmm. obviously I'm gonna, I'm down for whatever she wants to do, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, um, well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, coming up, we'll have a group of sessions about what's happened this week in sports and what's coming up. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Home Field Advantage. It's that time again for the debate. Yes, I am joined by Nathan here and Daryl. And uh, Nathan, this is your second time in the debate now. They must like you or something. I'm 1-0 looking for 2-0. Oh, okay, okay. Well, we don't really do the whole victory thing here, but uh, okay. To I always win, T-Pain. To each his own. To each his own. Welcome. This is your first time in the debate portion. Yes, sir. Excited it is. It is. Very excited. Extremely. Excited. Most definitely. Excited. Welcome. We're going to have a lot to talk uh, about. Introductions here. done. Let's jump into it. You know that's the fun part, getting into it now. What happened last night? The World Series. Oh, the Kansas glorious. Kansas City Royals won it all last night Didn't. in dramatic fashion. Didn't see it coming. Honestly, go didn't see it honestly coming. going in, I thought... No way the Mets are going to lose this. I saw the Royals lose it last year. I thought, you know, I'm a big repetitive guy, so I thought the Royals were going to lose again this year. I thought the Mets had the best lineup. I thought the Mets had the best bullpen. And, man, they didn't execute. Didn't execute. I was disappointed. I'm not going to lie to you. 
Uh, it, was, it was just a, it was a last minute thing for for the for the Royals. They they came in at the last minute. They worked their butts off, and it's been years since they've been back to the championship since uh, 1985, if I'm not mistaken. That's the last time they won it. They with were the there last, last year. Was the last time yeah. they won the championship? Last time they and, won was 1980. Yeah, they they came back uh, from a, a two two to zero, and they came back in the twelfth inning and just dominated. Yeah, absolutely. I'm proud Most of the guys. Yeah. It was good baseball. It was. No it was. Yeah. It was. It wasn't boring baseball. It was entertaining to watch. Especially, I mean, you didn't think. I mean, in the ninth inning, top of the ninth inning, I'm like, okay, Mets have it. Mets have yeah. it. They're up. They're up two nothing. Ninth inning. They're at home. Mets have it. We're going to Game Six. What happens? Lead off walk, base stolen by Lorenzo Cain, then a double by Hosmer, and then Hosmer makes the amazing play. Honestly, I, at the time, I thought Hosmer was stupid, and I, I thought he lost the game for him. But he he just he, he just he went home on that one just little small hit, tied the game up, and that's what happens. Honestly. Isn't that how a World Series goes, though? I mean, taking it back to the Texas Rangers, you know, the ninth inning blur, to this year's ninth <laughs> inning, you know, game decision time, time for the Royals to win. It's just, it's how the World Series goes. Mm -hmm. At the perfect right. stage, the perfect game, the perfect ending. Right. Well, I'm happy. Well, I, personally, personally, I didn't want, I didn't want Kansas City to win. I'll, I'll, I'll be out there and say okay. it. I didn't want them to win, uh, but they did, and respect to them. They won. They are world champions. Most definitely. Oh, Congratulations, Congratulations to Kansas City. Yeah. Congrats, we'll move on congrats. now to uh, something a little closer to home. We had homecoming this past weekend, Ooh, yes. which was fantastic. The festivities and everything were great. But let's get down to the business, the football game. Oh, we yeah. We got a win. Yes. Oh, yeah. We won. Another one. Another win. That's three Another in a row. One. That's Another three. one. That's They're on it. They're on it. Thank They're on you, it. Incarnate Word. Thank yeah, you. thank you very much. You know, I had to say it. I, I called it last. You I called it last week. Call I, called, I said, right. I said, you know? I said, if Zach Conk and the Lumberjacks can hold on to the ball, which I'm not going to say they did. There were a few turnovers, but for the most part, they held on to the ball, and they won. And I, told, I said, their defense needs to stop the running back for uh, June bugs, what they call him. <laughs> that incarnate word. June bug. They had to stop June bug, and they did. Incarnate word had 281 total yards. Passing yeah. and rushing. Uh, yeah. But wow. Zach, Zach threw for 256 yards. By yeah. himself? By himself. Mm -hmm. Zach Conk almost had more yards than an incarnate word total. Four touchdowns. You wow. know, so it doesn't get any better than that. And, so and someone asked me last week who do I think was going to win. They are like, is they going to win today or uh, on Saturday? And I was like, most definitely they're going to win. It's homecoming. They shouldn't lose. They're playing incarnate word. Even though incarnate word was a pretty good team, SFA also came out with a win. A big win. Oh, yeah, always. Do you think Zach Conk, uh, Proved his critics wrong? You think he's got the starting spot back? Not yet. Not yet. That's one game. One, yeah? That's true. one game. That's, that's, true. That's, that's one game, but you know, Zach has been a starting quarterback since last year. You know, one, everybody makes mistakes. Michael Jordan made mistakes, you know? That's but, true. you know, Zach Cunt has... Bad comparison. Yeah. <laughs> you, hey, most definitely, you know, but everyone, <laughs> everyone makes mistakes, you know? And so, therefore, I yeah. feel like Zach Cunt has proved himself that he can be the starting quarterback yeah. once again. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying, I mean, I'm not saying that he shouldn't be starting. Absolutely not. Fantastic player. That's yes. one game, but I think I think he's got it. But let's be honest. Okay. Yeah. Still, still sticking with college football here. How about that Miami Duke ending? Oh wow! <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness, if I was the head coach <laughs> of Duke, I'd be pulling my hair out still. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I, would. yeah if, I mean Miami had they they deserved their win. They deserved their win. They they went full out with some back backyard old school backyard football, and they came out with the win with 49 seconds. 49 seconds. It was a 49 second play. 49 but they second kicked play. it off at a six second mark. Right. Right. It's, Tie fun, game. it's funny you said that they're they're like a, a school, like a staffing school that like team. Because the coach was in an interview after the game. He was saying, yeah, literally this week in practice, we were talking about how we were that kind of team. We were the kind of team that we didn't, you know, we want to go out there and have fun, be scrappy, kind of like a schoolyard team. Right. The best the, the thing I like about this game is first of all, amazing finish. College football success. Second of all, this was Miami's, uh, Miami's coach. This was his first game. He's an intern coach. This was his first game, and he won in that fashion. They practiced the laterals. And it's, it's they a, practiced the laterals, and they actually got to use it. What? Duke's, Duke's defense actually prepared for this. Mm -hmm. Duke, uh, Duke's, uh, Duke's special team coach did a great job of preparing them for Miami because they knew that they were playing Miami, mm -hmm. which they're going to pull out all the stops to get the W. Poor execution, no tackling. Uh, it was unbelievable. Honestly, me, I don't think Miami should have got the win. Everybody really? saw laundry on the field. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah, yeah. Blocking the back calls, the, the knee touching the ground. Are you kidding yeah. me? No, no, no. The they the they, they used the eight laterals to score that touchdown. The block in the back, though, they reviewed it for nine minutes. Nine after, minutes. After the touchdown was scored. Nine minute review, and they still said it was a touchdown. And they also yeah, said how, the how knee do you it. How do you go against that when they I've reviewed seen, it for that long? I've seen balls bounce off the turf, and they call them, and they call them catch. Odd. But were those reviewed for nine minutes? Booth yeah. reviews or you know, whatever the refs are feeling that day. That's true. That's for true. something to be reviewed for nine minutes and still with no penalty in there, it, it shouldn't have been called for. They should have just let it alone. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm okay with it. So I'm, you, I'm, think, yeah. you think Miami deserved that victory? Yes, most definitely. To go with the 49-second ah. play. With eight laterals, 49 eight laterals. seconds, fielded at their own 25-yard line. The ball, the football got back to their own six-yard line. A tied point. game at the end and of the fourth quarter. And they brought it all the way back? Y'all are ridiculous. Oh, oh we're, we're, we're ridiculous. We're ridiculous. So he would have scored, so scored without all the all the penalties. He would have. Oh, absolutely. Oh, most definitely. Okay. Most definitely. There was, oh, there was one. There was one block that they said might have been blocked in the back, and they were it like that. And if you look at the other but block, go look at the film. Go look at the film, and there were enough. There were enough blocks you would have made it. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Let's stop arguing over this one, and we'll argue about something else now. Oh, <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, and how about Cow their uh, their on-field and off-field antics? Oh, uh, I can't stand the cowgirls. Oh, that, uh, see, that's why I'm happy. Houston. I can't stand the cowgirls. This my is heart. this is yeah, my heart. When people talk about Houston Texas, but that's oh, a whole good. different subject right there. But we're gonna go back to the cowgirls, cowgirls as we were talking <laughs> of. Oh, I'm happy. I, to be I, here. Uh, there was a lot of big situations, a lot of miscommunications on the field. As far as let's start with Des Bryant, you know, he they claimed that he would it was just changing a few words that wasn't very, you know, good oh, for yeah. football purposes. In the locker on, room, in the locker in room the Dallas, and on the in field. The Dallas Cowboys locker room, in the Dallas. where the football players are supposed to be, the head coaches, where they change. After a tough loss like that, I wouldn't want to see my mother. It's, it wasn't even the fact about the loss. It was what the media accused Des Bryant. They accused him of talking bad to one of the football players at the end of the game. Well, as he got his concussion, as he rolled off the field. Talking about, talking about the one football player. Yeah, lock it from Seattle oh Seahawks. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. sure. It was a, a vicious block by Jeff Keith. Yeah. yeah. Vicious block. Vicious block. All and, legal. But what the, the problem was is that they accused Des Bryant of his change of profanity with this guy as he was getting carted off the that's field. Tr if that's true, that, I'm sorry. I'm going to come out and say it. That's classless. Right. Yeah, that's, that's classless, but... That's the cowgirls for you. But who knows who Des Bryant was talking to? You honestly believe Des Bryant, the guy who's magnified tenfold more than anybody else in the NFL, would go as low as using profanity towards somebody being caught at all? See, I stopped you taking Des Bryant. I stopped taking Des Bryant serious when he bought that monkey. Oh <laughs> That's when I stopped taking Des Bryant serious. After he brought the we're monkey and named it Dallas? We're bringing Dallas, Dallas Bryant into this. Dallas Bryant, a monkey? What about Greg uh, Hardy, though? You can't forget about the man, the Greg monster. Greg Hardy. Uh, Greg Hardy. That's, that's, oh that's a whole different story. <laughs> what are you saying that is, about that? That is a whole that's different a story. That's a whole different story. That's a whole different story. But, I mean, I'm not a Cowboy fan, but I, 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 I enjoy seeing my city do well. You're, with you the respect Cowboys. it. Right. You respect yeah, the team. I respect that. And... Greg Hardy showing a coach like what you said. It's classless. It shouldn't be done. It doesn't matter if you're Tom Brady and the Patriots. You should not be pushing the coach, especially when you're brand new on the scene in Dallas. And, and for his past, let's be honest. Yeah, I guess everybody, everybody, that happened, and they say, oh, that happened, but, you know, say that was somebody else. Say that was J.J. Watt that pushed the coach. Oh, he's just, he's just in the moment. He's just in the game. Yeah. He's ready to, you know, he wants to get in there. But then it's Greg Hardy. Yeah. And you look at his past, and you say, oh, no, 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 he's violent. You know, he's angry, he's violent, he, right. he wants to hurt someone. It's like right. saying the Dominican Sue step on somebody for, what, the ninth time? Yeah. <laughs> he's just at Sue, he's a dirty guy. And honestly, <laughs> me being on the dirtbag kind of subject, I do miss old school football. And when it's time, <laughs> when, you can hit someone. when there's the right timing, I think football lacks the dirtbag um, football mm -hmm. players. And I think that there needs to be more to Dominican Sue's, guys that should be Go back, go back to the old Raiders, right? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, those guys were old Raiders. They were old Raiders. Raiders. Before they stepped on the field. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go on to that other football team in Texas, the Houston Texans, real quick. Oh yeah. And how the, how their oh, yeah. record, where they are, and they're still in contention for the division. Well, because that's the division. Look at who's in the division. See, let's not let's not pull that off because everybody comes off with that this the division nonsense. You know, the the Colts. Took away Andre Johnson. They they Still have they supposedly supposed to have a power team, you know. 
But at the end of the day, Where they're still they? they're still tied yeah. with the same record as us, and they're above us. And we're second. Their first is still. It's not because of our division, you know. What's sad and what should be scary is that the Houston Texans sooner or later are going to have to climb out of that division and face tough teams. They'll that be ready. will put 41 on them. They will be ready. And it happened to them before. It happened to them last week against the Miami Dolphins. We'll see. You know. So we'll they, see. it's it's we're gonna they're gonna learn from their mistakes and they're gonna improve. I, I guarantee you. I guarantee you, just a young franchise. It's just a young All franchise. Right, we'll see. Well, well, that's you know, we'll, like you said, we'll see. Yes. We'll see what happens for the rest of the season. How about that? All right. Yeah, most definitely. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at SFA underscore HFA for the latest updates on the Lumberjacks and from around the state. And be sure to nominate a student athlete you know for our weekly Aspire for Greatness Award. We will highlight the winner on next week's show for excelling beyond the field, whether that be in the community, classroom, in their family life, or otherwise. Just tag them with the hashtag, Aspire for Greatness. This week's winner, and featured earlier in the show, is Demi Payne. Demi, while breaking numerous records at the pole vault position, has also made it onto the Dean's List and is raising a child of her own. The side of integrity in the classroom, at home, and on the track is what, truly, is what it truly means to be a lumberjack. And we appreciate her truly aspiring for greatness. We'll be back next week with all of your latest SFA, local, state, and nationwide sports news. I'm Bobby Morrow, and I'll see you next week on Hope Field Again.